at the beginning of this year in January, I played my old man at a game of darts and I lost 5-2 with a three dart average of 39. Fast forward to the end of this year, as we get into December, I've managed to play and practice in the spare room here and my three dot average is up to 52. I'm going to share with you exactly how I manage that, what I've been working on, and talk today about a virtual lesson which just put me on the right path to improvement. Firstly, to set a bit of context, I come from a golfing background. I was a pretty tidy player, played against some pretty decent players like Tyrrell Hatton, Andrew Johnson, and I got down to a handicap of about scratch plus one at one point. So I thought transferring that skill set to this dartboard would be straightforward. I'll be a pro in no time, easy as that. I mean, compared to 300 yards, not a problem at all. That could not be any different from the case. Now, what I found actually, as I firstly scoured the internet trying to improve was there isn't really that much material out there technically, particularly at the same level of golf. Now, in darts, when you look up, you know, things, it comes to like the grip, you can grip it like this, like Phil Taylor, you can grip it like this, like Gary Anderson. But really all the advice is you just need to thro throw, throw the dart, find your own way, find your own rhythm. Well, I'll be perfectly honest, for the first probably three, four, five months of this year, my own rhythm, my own way of working did not work. But so to set the record straight, I mean, I am by no means a good darts player, you know, average to poor at best, but I'm really enjoying being on this journey. And as I move into 2024, I'm gonna to start to play live. I'm gonna to start to play some competitions. And I just really wanna use this vlog as a platform to embark and, and watch that journey and watch that development particularly in a sport that I absolutely love and I'm massively addicted to, like probably many of you watching today. And actually that's kind of where I want this to resonate. There'll be those of you at the same level as me that definitely will get some value from seeing that journey and seeing kind of what works and what helps me kind of make those improvements and start to win games. Um, and then there'll be those of you that, you know, already have 60, 70, 80 dart averages. You may be a semi-professional player. If you've got advice for me, I'd, I'd love to hear it as we go through the next year or two vlogging this journey. There's three things that I did do, which has certainly helped. And the thing that I'll talk about today is my virtual darts lesson. And I'm just looking back here and it's funny, when you have a virtual lesson or you have a video lesson like this, it's a really good point of reference for looking back at throughout the year, particularly with me. And you'll see in the footage in a moment there, that Daniel's talking to me about release. And it's something that I continue to struggle with, kind of you know, quitting on the dart and not completely following through and committing to the target. But you'll see from the footage, he gives some really good indicators and guidelines on rhythm and on the release phase of the throw, which I found really useful. What I love about the way Daniel delivers his footage is he asks you to record straight on, which will look a bit like this. But then he'll also ask you to fire some darts straight down the line as if you're looking at the camera like me. Um, you'll throw at double 10, you'll throw at double uh, 16. I think I've got that the right way based on the camera. Um, and at double tops, maybe not. Um, but then he gets to see your throw from different angles and then you will be able to get that feedback and start working on improving the technique in your throw and in your game. So I can't speak any more highly of this kind of process of getting somebody externally, someone qualified and who works with players like Glenn Durant and other professional and semi-pro players having a look at your darts and having a look at your throw for what is really inexpensive. I mean, if we're going to spend hours and hours and hours next year, even 30, 50, even a hundred pounds, you know, that value per hour per penny is absolutely fantastic. I'm going to roll into that footage now. Definitely check out Daniel. It's straight to the point darts. I've put links in the description to his channel here. I'm actually going to watch it back myself. Hope you enjoy it um, and it can help your darts and well, I'll see you in the next one. Welcome to your throw analysis service. We're going to start by having a quick look at your throw side on in real time first of all. It's good to see you checking your footing. Pick the dart up very quick though. Seems fairly solid. Very one speed though. Okay, so let's just look at the way you pick the dart up firstly. So we're going to go really slow with everything. And this is the first mistake right by here. So if you look at where your arm is there, your head isn't in position until your nose is touching that red line. That's when you, that's where your nose is when you start aiming. But your arm's already up and ready to throw. 
It's never good to multitask in darts, especially when you play under pressure. You want to have a set routine for everything. And there you can see you're aiming and your nose is just touching that red line. Just put a line under your elbow now. We'll check the elbow movement. See what's happening with this. It did look pretty solid though in real time. There's a little lift as you nod forward with the dart. Drop it back down. You keep it pretty still at this position going back. Make sure that dart's not over your line of sight though. You always want to be able to see over the dart and down the line you're throwing. But we'll just check to see what happens on the elbow as you draw back further. Are they going to go extra slow now? Well, ideally, we want to see that elbow nice and still as you start to accelerate through. And so you do keep it nice and still when you get to 90 degrees, but that dart's still in your hand. You want to try and get the dart to start releasing at this point. So the release is actually quite late with you. You want the wrist to start unlocking and for the dart to start to leave your hand around about this time. Keeping your elbow still to this point is very good though. A little rise after it's normal. Yeah, that's pretty good other than a little bit of a late release. On this next art, you do turn the elbow a little bit as well, which is a, a big no-no. Watch your tattoo. You can actually see your tattoo turn and then come back. And if you look at the finishing position of that hand, it does look like the arm is turned up a little bit. If you turn the elbow before at release, it'll have the same effect as pulling the dart. So be very careful of that. Just check for head movement and shoulder movement now. So little bit of shoulder movement, head movement is brilliant with you though, that's very good. But try and get that elbow a bit lower, keep the dart under the line of sight, keep it nice and still as you draw back, and nice and still on the elbow as you go through as well. A top tip for your timing, try and get your arm straight by the time the dart is halfway to the board. That usually gets the amount of power right. And if we look at the point of release, we've got aim, draw back, that's the release. Just as soon as it hits 90 degrees, the release begins. That's what we want to be doing. And keeping that elbow still as you go through is super important. If we look at other pros, look at Steve Beaton's elbow here. It's not using the shoulder at all. Keeping it nice and still. Hits the point of release around here at 90 degrees. Just after the release, or just on the release, a little rise from the elbow is quite natural. It should only be up to 3 inches most, though, just until the arm is straight. It shouldn't be pointing up in the air. And again, just hits this point of release, and you see a little rise coming into his elbow until the arm is straight. One more example now, if we look at Raymond von Barneveld, dead still, and you can see the wrist just unlock here on the point of release, and that little rise coming into it again. Try and imagine a line going from the treble 20, or the target in hand of course, all the way down to where you're aiming the dart, all the way to where you want to draw it back, or a tunnel some people like to imagine. Aim the dart on that red line, draw it back on the red line, and throw it through that red line. And finding that line you want the dart to travel down, is the easiest way to find a consistent elbow height as well. Other than that, it's just timing. You need to start accelerating through with the dart. You have to get gradually faster as you go through. It can't be one speed. And at the minute, there's not much of an acceleration. If you watch Damien hit us through here, so it gets gradually quicker, that's very important. If you don't get good timing, the follow through won't work. It's the same in every sport. To get a follow through, you have to accelerate. And a good tip for this is when you're drawing back, try and do the opposite. It can really help. So if you watch Damien Hetter, he gets gradually slower, comes to a little stop even, and then uses the wrist to flick through. He's flicking through nice and early with that wrist. As soon as he goes through, he's starting to unlock the wrist. We'll check front on now in real time as well. Okay, so it's nice and straight at the release. The hand does turn up a little bit, so that might be from the elbow. Again, as I mentioned, be careful of that. But let's go really slow now and just see how this dart comes off the hand. So the hand is quite closed up there. You do open it up as you come back, which is nice. And as you go through, that's good. You can see the gap between the first finger and the thumb. Going straight down the line you want. For some reason, though, you do turn the hand like this. So that the fingers appear as if your hand is actually twisted. Try and just let the arm drop. You opened the hand up lovely then when you drew back. Just let the arm fall. Flick the wrist and let the arm fall. And see how your hand should naturally finish if you don't bend or turn. Because if you have a bend or a turn in that throw when you're going through, if you do it at the point of release or just before, it will set the dart off course. Again, it's there again. So at least it's consistent. But I would try and get rid of this. 
Try and get the arm just dropping straight through nice and clear. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. But at least that handprint's consistent. One more dot. Now, again, look at the little fingers. See how it's closed up? When you draw back, you open it up. You might want to try just aiming with it opened up. Anyway, turn the arm out. It'll give you a little less to do. And as you go through, this time, it didn't look quite as straight. And there's the turn again after it. So at least the handprint's consistent. But there is a turn there, and I would definitely try and get rid of it. Just let the arm fall. Flick the wrist, let the hand fall. Now if you watch Josie de Sousa as he goes through, see how the hand just drops? So you get the gap between the first finger and the thumb just going straight towards the target. That's more, that's what we're after, keep it simple. And see how he turns his arm out when he's aiming, so the little finger's up. Hand is nice and open. That means he can just get a nice short draw back and go straight through, there's no bending or turning. Now at the minute you're doing it more the James Wade style, in which you close your hand up. And then as you draw back you open it out. And that's okay. Yeah, as long as your hand is opened out before you go through, that's the main thing. But you might just find it a bit more easy if you if you start aiming with the hand turned out. I definitely do. It's not essential. As long as the arm's turned out before you go through, that's all that really matters. But give it a go. It can make life a little bit more simple. And if you look at Glenn, you can see his hand's quite closed up. He does it as he drops down. So when he goes into the drawback, the hand is nice and open. See those fingers coming up? And it's straight through. So try and keep that arm turned out. And if you watch me here, I take a deep breath in, get my feet in position, get my head in position, and then pick up the dart. It's a pre-shot routine and it keeps me composed. Then as I go through with it, look at the shape of my hand there. This is how my hand looks when I throw a good dart. Every time I throw a good dart, this is how it should look. And because I know that, I've got a visual confirmation after each dart. And then I can remember the feeling of that dart and try and replicate it over and over again. And if you look at my handprint on all of these darts, it's always the same. Every time I throw a perfect dart. Now if you look at this last dart, see how my hand is completely turned? And look at the margin I missed by now. It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence at all. If I go back to the board, deep breath in, get my feet in position, get my head in position, pick up the dart, and we go again. And the handprint is perfect that time. And again, perfect again. And this time I again get the last dart perfect. And so I know that dart's gonna go in. And when you can get this clarity in the throw, you'll, it'll be easy to feel when something goes wrong. And when something goes right, it's easier to replicate because you can feel when it's going right. You wanna flick the wrist and just let the arm drop into that natural handprint and it has to be natural. Try and get rid of that turn. So the hand finish is a little bit more like mine. Don't try and force it, just see how your hand would finish as you've naturally gone through. So if you look at this dropping motion, flick the wrist and let the arm fall onto this level, just like that. Nice and straight. And go straight through, down the line you want it to go, without bending the wrist or turning the elbow at all. Straight foot back and straight forward, just like that. That is what you want to find on your throw. And that will take you into your natural handprint. So you pop through and you can see my handprint's the same after every single dart. It's just straight back, straight forward, nice short draw back, nice flick through. And in terms of the pre-shot routine, just look at how easy this is to manage. So he gets his feet into position. There it is, gets his head into position and then picks up the dart. There's no multitasking at all. And this was BDO number one against PDC number one. Again, gets his feet in position, then gets his head into position, and then picks up the dart. Everything's in an order. There's no multitasking. They're always in control. It's good for helping you to keep your composure as well. But just to summarize what I want you to do going forward, firstly is to implement the pre-shot routine. So get your feet right, get your head right, and then pick up the dart. And don't pick up the dart extremely fast. Gauge with the target. So actually aim with, with your eyes before you start to pick the dart up. Try and pick the dart up down the line you're about to throw. It's all very composed and controlled. And secondly is to lower the elbow. And you want to lower the elbow until you've hit point three as well. Which is to keep the dart under the line of sight. 
You don't need to lower it a lot. Just make sure you can always see that line you want to throw down. Draw it back down the line. Throw it through the line. Point number four is decelerate the drawback. This is something that could really help with your timing. It's not totally essential. But if you can get gradually slower as you come back, it will help you accelerate through. And accelerating through is essential. Number five, keep the drawback as short as possible. The less you draw back, the less that can go wrong. And hand in hand with that was keeping the hand turned out. So at the minute you keep the hand very closed up, then you open it out as you draw back. Try and aim with your hand nice and turned out, nice and open. And draw back nice and short. The less that can go wrong. The less you do, the better. Number six, very important to flick through with the wrist earlier. You don't want the release to be late. So as soon as you're finding that 90 degrees, you want the dart to start leaving your hand. So once you've drawn back, immediately start flicking that wrist and just let the dart go off the hand nicely. Number seven, keep the elbow on the shoulder as still as possible. Very, very important. You want all the throw to be coming from the wrist and the fingers. That's all the elbow is doing. It's just going backwards and forwards. Everything is from the wrist and the fingers. And number eight, remove the turn from the throw and find your natural handprint. So at the minute, you release the dart pretty well, pretty straight, and then all sorts are happening. And that turn, so your fingers look all crooked. It's okay if it happens after you've let the dart go, but as soon as you start having a little bit of that turn at the point of release or before it, it's going to go wrong. So I'd always get out of the habit of that if you can. And you'll have a much, much clearer throw if you're just going straight back and straight forward. And keeping everything clear and simple is key in getting a throw that's as easy as possible to replicate. And a, a throw you can replicate consistently is a consistent one. If you want consistent results on the dartboard, you have to have a consistent throw. So keep trying to find that line you want to throw down, straight back, straight forward, into your natural handprint. But that's it for today. This is your throw analysis service complete. If you do have any questions about the feedback, by all means get in contact and I'll be happy to help you as best I can. And as always, I really hope this helps your game.